I believe this just has to do with warranty issues. If, if, if you have an issue with your vacuum and your vacuum's five, six years old and it's just clogged and you can't get to cleaning it, then basically a normal person would go out and just buy a new vacuum. There's our little pin on the inside here and we're just going to press on it which is going to release the tension on the circuit board and then pull it up. Now our whole unit will come in off. Then we'll just pry this other wheel out. I mean, look at the hair. And the gasket does go toward the outside of the, the unit. Okay, so uh, we're back again today, and today is going to be a little bit of a different video. We're going to bounce off the Dysons uh, on the vacuums, and we're going to the Shark. Now, this Shark, I actually purchased this for my mom uh, after I fixed her purple rocket that was on a cord. I said, uh, she's getting a little bit of age left on her. I said, Hun, we're going to get you a cordless one, and she has a very small uh, one-eyed beagle dog. So I said, we need to try the new Shark. Uh, it's supposed to be, you're not supposed to be, have to clean this head. It's supposed to be self-cleaning head. Um, but as it appears, the unit itself needs clean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this vacuum up. I'm gonna go through uh, in extreme detail on how to do this. And we will go from there. Don't forget to check the links below on uh, any more of the vacuum videos and more Dyson videos to come. It's just. Got to oh, look at the hair on this thing. Okay, so first off, we're just going to break it into the uh, three pieces here for the motor unit, our uh, wand shaft, and our cleaning head. And as you can see, our bucket is full. She said, I, I don't know, I think she's had this, I bought this over a year ago for her, and she said she's never cleaned it. So still runs it's just uh the filters need maintained and it's still got all the the stickers on it which is cool oh great so let's empty the container oh man look at the dog hair well one benefit not having a dog Okay, and if you own one of these, you probably already know, you've got to basically release your canister, like so, and then we're basically going to go to the other side with our switch, and we're going to pull our cup apart, like this, then we'll clean the filters. Now that our unit is disassembled, the first thing I want to clean is the inside filter of the unit. Itself. Um, this is the exhale field filter. It's I don't believe it's HEPA. It's just uh, a lot of these are just a filter to quiet the vacuum down and you pull the filter out like so. This one isn't real dirty. It is dirty on the inside of the uh, of the filter but on the outside it looks pretty clean so we're going to just wash this thing down and try to put the water from the inside to push the water out. Um, yeah, just keep running it until, uh, until you're satisfied. And this unit doesn't look very dirty compared to what my usual videos are. Get my my drying tool here. It's a coffee cup holder I don't use. Then we're going to proceed to our primary filter. And actually, this vacuum doesn't look dirty at all. We're just going to squeeze the water and dirt out of the filters. So, it's our primary, and here's our secondary.
And this unit isn't very dirty. However, it the smell of animal. Um, if it, you know, anybody that owns an animal knows that your your vacuums are going to smell like animal filters. And I have so many people that uh, message me or comment me that I need to get some spray to spray in these filters um, for smell because it will make the vacuum smell better if you spray it down with even a, something for a car like a car scent. We're just going to squeeze the filter out and if you lose one of these filters I'll put a link below to Amazon so you can buy these filters. These filters are pretty pretty cheap so and anything you purchase really helps me out in the long run for uh, continuing to make these videos. Basically I'm so upset with the old, working on all these vacuums and all this that I have decided I'm going to build my own vacuum. Uh, I think I've got a a source for the parts of my vacuums and I'm gonna build my own vacuum and oh these have uh, and I'm gonna sell my own vacuum in limited quantities so you know I've been janitoring for 10 uh, well, 13 years and I'm just not happy with what's in the market so I can build one I want to build one I want to bring my own vacuum to market so um, we're actually going to we're just going to run water through this and then we'll go get my infamous glass cleaner. And I like to use glass cleaner over something like uh, scrubbing bubbles to clean this because scrubbing bubbles has other stuff inside of it that, you know, I, I just don't like using it. Okay, let's get the glass cleaner. Okay, now before we go any farther here, um, what will happen if you actually clean this out and run this under your sink, you're going to get moisture within this area of the cup and can actually lead to some smelly uh, situations here. So on the inside of this unit itself, you have one, two, three, and four uh, Torx head screws. Now the one thing about these Torx head screws is they're not normal Torx heads. They've got a little nubbin on the inside of the screw and that's called an anti-tamper device. Basically you have to have these anti-tamper uh, Torx heads with little holes drilled into them that will fit down in the hole. This actually prevents the normal a normal person who doesn't have these tools from touching this vacuum. There's really no other choice uh, of doing it. You don't see these a whole lot on vehicles and stuff. I have a <laughs> I have a government building that I clean that actually all the bathroom stalls have these on the partitions and the walls. All the uh, everything that has a screw in it has these kind of these kind of uh, screws and bolts into it which is hilarious because they don't want you messing around in the bathrooms but um even up even the paper towel it's like it's almost like a prison in the bathrooms um but anyway what we're going to do is we're going to get these screws out and we're going to separate this red uh top part here and then we're going to spray it down and re-rinse the unit okay and for the torx head size that you need is a t10 anti-tamper bit it's really small really fine um, I will put a link below in the Amazon description, but we're just going to come in and we're going to remove all four of these bolts. And this, this piece here is two pieces. Do not lose these. I don't know if you can get replacements for these or not. Probably call Shark and they'd be like, well, what are you doing taking that apart? I just don't know how you're supposed to properly clean this when you get moisture within the, the canister here. Um, without taking these screws out. So I believe this just has to do with warranty issues. If, if, if you have an issue with your vacuum and your vacuum is five, six years old and it's just clogged and you can't get to cleaning it, then basically a normal person would go out and just buy a new vacuum. So get this last one out of here. These are going to be the same screws that are inside of the uh, 
head unit itself as well. So we'll take this apart. I've never taken one of these apart. I took the other blue model that I have apart that has the brush head but not the self-cleaning attachment. So that ought to be real interesting. Watch that. So we're just going to separate these two pieces now. And you're just going to kind of pull on it. And as you can see, this is your cyclone area. And there's actually grooves cut into the plastic. And what this does is this creates velocity and flow inside of the vacuum. So the air comes in just like your car. Your car breathes air. It goes into what would be an intake manifold. The air gets cut with the plastic. That's why these fans are cut like this, which creates more suction and more velocity for the vacuum. So I believe that this should just pull out. There shouldn't be any more screws here. No, it's just sealed in. I had a heck of a time. I remember on the blue one getting this out. There we go. So we're just going to pull that out. And as you can see, the amount of dirt and dust that remains just when you wash it. If this is really heavily used, it'll be 10 times worse. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and run this gasket under the sink here and set this aside. It's real important not to break this. I forgot this was in here. We're just going to get this gasket clean and then set it on my handy dandy vacuum co coffee cup dispenser. Then we're just gonna run this back under water, get as much as we can. We're not gonna really, I mean, if you wanna use a brush, we can use a brush, but we're gonna come back. I'm gonna spray this with foaming glass cleaner and let the glass cleaner do its job. Maybe come back with a small brush and get it really clean. Now that we have everything rinsed, we're just going to hit it with the foaming glass cleaner. Let the glass cleaner do its job for, I don't know, a couple minutes or so. Then we'll come back and rinse it out. Now that we've let our glass cleaner kind of soak into the unit itself, I'm just going to come back and use a very small brush and get these main points that I knew were dirty, which basically will be your cyclone pieces. And then we'll just rinse these. And your filters and everything are all going to have to set up for 24 hours before we reinstall the unit. Same thing with the top cap here. We'll just kind of brush it just a little bit. This vacuum isn't actually very dirty. Now we will go to our main unit. Just go inside here of this, the inner portion here. And we're just going to finally brush the metal mesh piece here. If, it's if your vacuum is really dirty, you want to take basically paper towels or like a microfiber towel. And what you want to do is kind of just push it up. And then use a kitchen knife, a butter knife or something and go up into the vacuum cleaner like so. 
all the way up and you'll be able to get these edges here and then just run the towel over and down and you'll get all the edges clean this vacuum isn't that dirty i really thought this vacuum would be 10 times worse than what it is and we're just going to rinse this out I haven't been shopping in a while, so I have my banana stand. We will just well, maybe we won't. let those hang and dry okay first things first we've got our head here and we're gonna unlock the bottom plate of the vacuum and we're gonna remove the bottom plate um, I'm using a nickel this time instead of that's even if you own a nickel everything's going digital and we're just going to remove our inner plate here. Now this head's supposed to be self-cleaning, but as you can see, you're still going to get debris. This unit, I will say, is way louder than the normal rocket vacuum. However, this thing is just incredible that it, 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 they just figured out how to clean carpet with. I don't know what this brush head is. I just, it, it's, I, I'm not even certain on what it is, but it's, it's not plastic. I, I don't I'm not real sure to be honest with you and we'll go ahead and set this uh, plate in the sink come back and spray it get it cleaned up and then well she's got leaves and shit in there we're going to start removing screws here so just bear with me Okay, if your unit starts, if your unit starts to basically have problems rolling here, as you can see these screws, we will address these. You can see the amount of dog hair that is inside of the wheel itself. So this thing isn't, I mean, it's still rolling, but that needs to be cleaned up also. I'm gonna have to take my glasses off. And if I remember right, there is approximately like 14 screws or something crazy in this vacuum so there's one there's two there's three there's four there's four screws on the front piece we're going to go all the way to the back We've got one on the left side. We've got one deep down. Okay, so I had a problem with this one before on the other unit. And we'll have to address that with an extension. It's five. This will be six. lose them I'm gonna go ahead and remove the back three or four sorry if this is kind of hard to see we have two more in the back here this is all going to separate the top and the bottom housing. 
Um, in a very rare occasion, you're going to be able to get to the belt here if you have a broken belt. So I will show you that. I will not show you how to replace the belt because I'm not 100% sure. And this one here, they molded the plastic just enough so you couldn't get in here. And last time I used a knife to cut the hole just a little bit larger. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and continue to remove these screws first. I think that's it besides you've got one in the front here this is going to be for your plastic screen over the top so you can see your brush head and I nope they're all the same size okay so what we have now is we just have the one here. Now I do not have an extension for this so we're going to very carefully with a razor knife. If you want one of these description in the links below. And I'm just going to cut this hole just a little bit bigger. And we're just going to take the razor knife and we're just going to we're going to slightly turn it. We're not going to uh uh oh my god and then we're going to come in and we're going to cut my finger and I'm not going to be able to go to work cuz I use my hands all the time. And we're just going to trim this one up, this hole up, just a little bit so I can get my tool in here. We're going down as deep as we can and we're just turning. We're just removing just a little bit of plastic. So I was able to get the hole cleaned out just enough to get the uh, T10 bit in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and put the bit in there until you can feel it on the screw. And then we're going to take our screwdriver adapter and hopefully get this screw out. Okay, let's get this one get the screw out of there. Now if I remember right, we just got to pull this apart because that's what I did to the other one. I'm going to go ahead and get all the screws set aside so we don't lose them. Kind of go around the edge with this flathead screwdriver and kind of pry. actually a slot in the back of the unit for a small screwdriver on that left side okay there's our cover to our engine holy guacamole I haven't seen one of these in a while okay 
So just be ext <laughs> be extremely careful doing this. We've got our motor on our right side. This is what they're going to turn your brush. And we've got our circuit board that's going to control the speed of the motor to the switches on the handle and also the LED light strip. Okay, I forgot about this. You're going to have three additional screws on the top. For the plastic co uh, cover. One, two, and three. Go ahead and put this aside. We'll clean all of this. And we actually have five, five screws for the plastic cover on the top side. Now these screws are actually shorter than the other screws that come off the bottom side, so keep these screws separate. These will be for the top side of the plastic. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to zoom in here. And on our circuit board, we have a very small clip in on our board. This is going to be for our LED light. We're going to go ahead and unplug this. And we're just going to pull on it ever so slightly. Don't pull on this hard. We're just going to unclip it. And as you can see, this line runs through the plastic housing. The reason I can't get this... Uh, undone here is because actually there's screws on the internal side by the motor by the belt so we've got to come in and remove those as well this is our top screw for the plastic cover Go ahead and keep this with the other screws that we've already removed for the plastic cover. And then there should be one down below here, but I don't recall how I, how I did that before. I think I actually removed the engine. to get to it. Okay, there we go. So next we're gonna remove the light switch cover, which again, we're gonna access another screw here for the front of this cover on the front. There's three screws, I said two, but there's three. Yeah, I just I just can't remember how. Okay, let me show you this on here instead of pulling on this. This one is different. On the back side, I do not know if we're going to be able to get to this. Let's see if we can focus here. On the back side of this cable is a small release pin for this wire. And we have got to press on it. Have is there's our little pin on the inside here and we're just going to press on it which is going to release the tension on the circuit board and then pull it up so on the back side of the clip you'll see it it's right there and there's probably going to be one on the black one as well and they'd use different they use different clips here than um, what was used on the blue version the shock shark rocket cord list that I have and on the black one 
also you'll want to push it in I don't know if you can see that what I'm doing here is you're going to push it in and then pull it up and pull it up and run those wires that I moved back around that capacitor this is your capacitor and run it back and forth here so we can make it die. I think I believe that was put there for a reason follow the route of the motor and undo the cables Then on the motor itself, we have one screw on the top and then one on the bottom. Now the ones for the motor are actually a different color. Now maybe we'll just leave that. here these covers I probably should have removed these sooner but I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I didn't want to break them they should just pop on there they do they just pop on just take our flathead and pry them off and get that cover off makes things a little bit easier here oh I actually broke that oh great then we'll just remove these three side pry this one off as well busted this plastic one when I took that cover off so just kind of be careful with that and now that our vacuum is apart here we're just going to I'm taking a, a clean moist towel here this time and just getting all the excess dirt off of it set this aside we'll address those dog ridden wheels here in a second when we put it back together okay moving on here we've got one more glad or screw I believe for this plastic cover this is a nightmare for all this to get all this done um, we're going to be real careful because this is the LED light. We're actually going to remove this this uh, light on the front of the vacuum 
and it just has a wire trail and then it should be removable this one actually looks like it's glued on Ugh. It appears that we need to remove these two end covers for the roller. This cover is just pressed on to the housing. This will remove the motor. Be careful with that. And then finally, we're going to get our cover off. And there is a seal that runs along the edge of the cover. Be very careful with this. When we flip it upside down, you can see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very gently peel it off the cover. And then we're gonna set the cover aside. seal okay now that we have this completely disassembled we're just going to pull up on the LED strip we're going to set it aside on the inside of the unit itself on the clear cover we're just going to pull that piece off and then this piece and now we're going to clean the stuff in the sink we're starting to get a, quite a few parts here on this vacuum and we're just going to clean and brush our main piece here. And then set it aside. Same thing with our uh, wheel cage. And then our plastic. Piece. and then we're going to actually we are going to spray all this down with glass cleaner again and make sure everything is clean clean when it goes back together. So, spray it down. Then we'll let it set. And then come back and clean it up again. Now as for this roller to clean it, what I'm going to do is we're just going to use the toothbrush and we're going to just get the toothbrush wet 
and then run it over the blade. We don't want to get a lot of water in here because it appears that this is a sealed unit with uh, bearings in it. So just with a little bit of water, we're going to clean the fins up and everything. And get it looking good. Then with a towel, we'll just kind of wipe it dry. Take this brush and get some of that out of there. Now with our parts, we're going to remove the glass cleaner as needed and just scrub down to clean all the stuff. This is why I use the foaming glass cleaner because it just grabs the dirt and then it, it removes it much easier. And, and the glass cleaner doesn't have anything abrasive in the chemical mix because it's specially formulated for glass not toilets to kill germs we're just going to clean all these parts and let them dry then we'll start to reassemble be back in a little while Okay, that was a complete nightmare. So now that everything's pretty much for the most part dry, we're gonna put this thing back together. I'm not enthused about taking this thing apart. Um, if I only have to do this once every year, I'll be much happier. These, these uh, I forgot how much of a pain in the butt these are. Okay, first things first, um, we're going to reinstall our brush bar and insert the, I thought there was three, but I guess there's just two, two screws. And one little tip here, when you're messing with this stuff that's plastic, just get it in there and get it tight and get it snug. Don't come in and just over, over tighten these things because you'll actually break the plastic, so. Now that we have those two there, we're going to come in and put our uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install our brush bar into our plastic cover and I don't know if you can see this, there's a little strip here that this will fit into the groove once it's set. So in the plastic housing, it'll set into the groove of the unit. Then we're gonna come back on this side and put our plastic cover on, which is just gonna press on like so. And then we'll tighten our two screws here. Into the unit itself. Now that our cover is clean, 
we are going to reinstall the cover like so oh we're not going to reinstall before we reinstall our head unit back onto the motor we're going to flip it over and reinstall our rubber gasket here and we're just going to lay the gasket in the track that it came out of and don't force this gasket we're just going to kind of run our finger along where it goes in the groove of the unit just gonna press our gasket in like we got a little excess here which means I got it and get it tight enough around one area okay a little tricky don't force the gasket down into the housing real tight you want it loose if it's real tight you're going to end up with a bunch of excess gas god this camera and then uh you're going to just have a nightmare with it so just lay it in there nice and gentle and okay, now with the gasket installed don't forget about our plastic housing screws you'll have two There's one, and there's two there. Goes my cell phone. I think there was a third one on there. Oh, you know what? This goes into the that goes in when it's all together there nope it just goes in Okay, now with um, the front part assembled and looking good, I have to say, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to set the engine in here oh boy, I don't remember which way, I think it was in this way actually I think I'm going to have to connect, we're going to we're going to connect the engine first Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect the engine back and this is going to be a little tricky to put this engine back 
in in its place here we're just gonna these screws we're gonna move these screws out take your finger on the back side and push these two screws out as far as you can and we're gonna insert the the motor and the belt is actually ribbed to turn the brush so after we have that in place we're going to try to get the engine straight and then insert the screws back in place and just get one of the one of them started after you get the belt on and then come down on the lower side and put in it in screw it in as well and then get it pretty much tight and then go back to the top and this is going to actually pull the engine from up and at an angle to straight so don't tighten these screws up all the way on the bottom and then come to the top you want them both loose so the motor is straight onto the belt otherwise the, if the motor isn't straight and the motors at an angle like this or like this down it'll chew the ribs of the, the belt up and then you have a even a bigger problem and we're turning okay except for our gasket Now what we're going to do is we're going to place the engine and the front assembly back onto the housing like so. There we go. If if the if the front of the housing doesn't exactly fit it and it feels like it's not going down, tilt the front of the unit up forward and then push it back down and it'll kind of even its way out here into the housing. Okay, now that we have that in place here, we're going to install our screws and what we're going to do is we're just going to place our screws in the hole to attach the assembly back to the unit well, maybe we're not And now we're going to attach a couple of our screws back. Well, if I can remember, yeah, they, we had two on the top here. And then that will hold it in place. And then we've got to flip it over. And we actually had four. Except for we didn't install our LED light strip. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have our piece in place here, we're going to go ahead and put our light strip back on. And then we're going to just run the cable back through how it was ran. Through the unit. It actually run down. 
and then up and then down. Then it came down and it actually might have to remove this here. There's just a little bitty piece there that it's got to go through. And then it goes down and then hooks up like so. Then we'll plug it back in. You'll hear it click like so. We'll actually run it back, kind of push the wire down. Okay, then we'll put our two screws to hold it before we flip it over back in the top to hold everything together like so Ugh. now we need to flip this flip this over It looks like our rubber seal is good. We got a good seal here. Then we're going to come in and put our put our four screws in. Maybe we won't put our four screws in because the top piece needs to be on first. Okay, let's move into plugging the circuit board back in. Okay, so on the motor here, we had our two wires. The white wire was on top, the black wire was on the bottom. And they actually ran through together. So what we'll do is we'll install the white wire first. Like so. And there's little grooves in here. We're going to want to make sure that the wire goes all the way down into the grooves because we're going to lay the black wire over the top of this white wire. So it's real important to get it in the grooves and get it the right length. And then we're going to push the plug in. Remember how we had to use the screwdriver to loosen it? Well, when you put it on, we're just going to push it. And you'll hear it click. And then put our waterproof rubber piece over the top of the clip, back onto the clip. Like so. And we're going to take our black wire lay it over the top of the white wire and then we're going to just install it back onto the circuit board as well we're going to push it on until we hear it click I think I put the engine in backwards is what I did. I think we'll be okay. We will just turn this wire here this way. What in the world happened to that? Oh, there we go. Okay.
like so. What a nightmare. Okay. So we've got our engine in. Our brush turns. Our motor lines up with the belt. We've got all of our screws in. And I think I'm missing a piece. Actually going to install our covers for the brush roller and they're actually marked one's marked L and one's marked R so I imagine the L is on this left side if you're facing the vacuum like so and we're just going to click these into place side now I did damage this side but we've still got one good clip left and we're just gonna snap this back in place as well uh, you'll hear it clip in and we're just gonna rotate our brush again to make sure it's turning the belt and it is have our top piece here and we're going to install it and we're just going to snap it in as well it's just going to clip in and then we're going to go on the back side and put all the screws in these four screws here are for this front bar piece and we'll just snap this piece in as well go to the bottom side real quick and we're going to insert our screws extra screws and I forgot that I need to put the three screws <laughs> back into this so I had to repop this cover off and we're gonna put three screws back into the brush roller so it don't come loose when it starts running important to get these three put back in here that's why you want to separate the screws you need to separate the assembly screws and the disassembly screws on the bottom side and then what goes what's going on in the internal so we'll go ahead and pop this piece back on Then I had one last screw here that went on the top here. 
and that's all the screws thank god then we will snap our light piece back on make sure our wires are all okay here then we'll put our other piece on okay now we're gonna just reinstall all our screws there's one Okay guys, when you disassembled this, you should have had two shorter screws. And if you didn't separate them, those shorter screws go next to the wheels. Those are your two shorties. And the rest of them will be all the same size. And I'm just going to go like from the left over on all these other screws. screw here or two more screws and then our infamous screw that we had to trim our hole out of tempted to just leave this one out. Okay, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back and we're just going to kind of tighten up, make sure everything's tight. I don't want to have to do this again on all these screws. I want to be one and done here and just pray to God I got everything back together correctly which I'm pretty sure I did then reinstall our other strip here use our nickel and lock it back 
Now we're gonna mess with these dirty cat wheels, dog wheels. Okay, now on these wheels here, um, you can, you know, you can use your fingers to kind of pry them open, but these wheels I think are removable. You want to get basically get your flathead screwdriver and pull these wheels out of the housing like so. And we just basically, you can see the amount of hair that's got into the wheel and onto the post. And that will make it feel like it's not sliding properly. There's actually a small gasket as well. And I think that, that gasket is, there's only one on here. So that makes me wonder if they, the gaskets aren't for, to prevent the hair from coming into the, the shaft, but it didn't do its job. These wheels are like a really soft material. They're not like Dyson's where they use a hard um, a hard piece of plastic. So I mean, look at what look at what come out of that wheel. So I'm going to do something here that they don't really recommend. And this is actually fire, uh, gun cleaner or gun oil. And I'm just going to oil that down a little bit. So we have more of a free flowing situation here. And we're just going to put that back in there. just we've got the wheel in place here we're just gonna push down on the wheel until it snaps in and with that oil in there we're gonna turn this wheel and wipe off the excess and this is gonna lube, lubricate the shaft and the wheel on the inside it also might keep the hair from sticking to the unit itself then we'll just Pry this other wheel out. I mean, look at the hair, and the gasket does go toward the outside of the the unit. That will spray. Put the wheel shaft back into the wheel, put the gasket on. Then we'll reinstall the wheel. We're going to press down until we hear it click. Now we're going to turn the wheel with the oil and wipe off the excess oil and lubricate the, the shaft. There we go. One thing I do want to mention that I did miss was I forgot that there's actually a gasket on the bottom side of this cup and it's actually glued on and this one I am not going to remove. Um, if your glue has wore off you can remove it but you will see that moisture and dirt is getting down into the seal itself. So if you feel like you need to remove that, you can remove that, remove that very carefully, and then pull it apart and uh, put it, install it back onto the unit. Okay, now that all that's done, uh, we're gonna put our canister back together. And our canister, we're gonna put our gasket back in, like so. Kinda push it down. Then we're going to install our dry cyclone piece. And this one we're just going to kind of 
got the washer going again. I just I got so much going on. I just can't. I can't. I, I just feel like I can't get caught up on YouTube. It's just I've got a four wheeler sitting outside. I got a motorcycle sitting outside. I got three, four people emailing me about motorcycles I need to buy, and we're it's just it's just a nightmare. Uh, well, it's not a nightmare. Let me re-say that. Because of my YouTube videos, I now have people contacting me with extremely rare motorcycles that I just can't get. I cannot get the bank flow to come in so I can just go and get these bikes and buy these bikes. I applied for a PPP loan with my business. They denied me. I applied for an SBA loan. They denied me. I, I'm, I'm running my entire business out of my regular income, and I'm just it's just extremely difficult. And I'm just trying to trying to stay ahead here. Um, well, we're going to reinstall these four screws. I see the YouTube stuff working, but I just don't see it giving me the income that I need to do what I want to do um, on YouTube. So I've kind of come up with some other ways to get some additional uh, funds through YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all my AMS oil customers if you're buying oil. If you're a guy and you're buying oil and you're watching these vacuum videos, I highly suggest you waiting to purchase your girlfriend or wife a vacuum until I get my vacuum custom model made. Your girlfriend will crap her pants when she sees that thing. So there's three screws, and then we'll put the last one in. I hope if I don't lose it. There we go. That washing machine's loud. I got one of these washing machines. I had a bunch of front loaders. And I couldn't get the front loaders to last over a couple years, so I went back to a uh, a top loader, but I got the one with the glass in the top of it, where you can actually see the clothes in there. Well, those are work towels, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, now we're just gonna install our uh, exit filter back into the unit. Like so, we're gonna put our secondary filter in and our primary filter. And we just need to make sure that this stays dry, that all this is dry for up to 24 hours before we reinstall. Then we're just gonna hook up our unit. Bam, bada bing, bada boom. Then we've got our wand. And then we have our head. And I do not know, I hope this works. Hey, all right. The light work on it? Yep. Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope this video really helped you out. And don't forget to check out my other vacuum videos. And if you made it all the way through, then you heard about my complaints about my washing machine. And I am building it. I will have a custom foreign performance vacuum cleaner before too long. I'm going to base it on the Dyson V7 V8 model because that's what I, I like building. Um, as for these shark models, if you're going to go to the store, you need to buy these sharks. Um, they're more durable than a Dyson and they have added features like when I'm at work and I lean this vacuum against the wall This little piece of rubber keeps the whole vacuum from falling. So keep your eye out Thanks for watching any purchases from the link below help me out and I'm really kind of hoping I'm gonna start getting some vacuum videos at least once a week and I'm gonna get back in the garage and start working on these, these power sport equipment Here.